Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. I'm here today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you give your life to God today. Amen. Now, today's message is the blood of Jesus. A wonderful message, the precious blood of the Lamb. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to the word of God, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20. Moses speaking here saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God has commanded you. Verse 21. And the same way he sprinkled the blood both to the tent and all the vessels used in the worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with the blood. Now, what, now listen to this. Without shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So now today, the Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of your sins. What is Satan here today in this society? What is Satan here in this world is the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan don't want to hear about the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan today, if Satan have his way today, without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary, the devil will do or will conquer this world, you see? So the Bible is a bloody book. Amen? So either way you open the Bible, if you cut it through, it will breathe. So today I have four letters uh, for your memory that will help you uh, to build up your life in Jesus Christ, you see? Now these four letters begins with what B. It's so simple. So the first B is what? The book, which is the Bible, the inspiration, and infallible word of God. The second B is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, that was shed for me and for you. And the third B is what? Is the bed, which is the new bed. Just quite say, without being born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And the final B, which is the fourth B, is the blessed hope, which we have today. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is called the blessed hope, you see? So now, it is not about glory story. It's about what? Glory story. Apostle Paul says this in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Here is the question that he asked. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to say that the grace of God may abide? By no means, he says, God forbid. I also say what? God forbid. And we ought to do to say what? God forbid. So friend, God does not want you to die and go to hell. Do you know that? God have a blockage to hell. And that blood case is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ went to the Calvary to save you and to save me. And the Bible says, with this precious blood that you will do or you will be saved. So today I want you to say, uh, because the, the prophecy of the saving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ began what? From Genesis also to what? To Revelation, you see? So you're going to find out today that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ speaks. The precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ speaks, you see? Because God has done what? Transformed this world. Before God created uh, the heavens and the earth, the moons, uh, the stars, and the mountains, and the valleys, the Bible says this in the book of Revelation because Calvary was in the mind and the heart of Almighty God. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. It speaks about those who are going to do or worship the Antichrist during the time of war, separation. So it says here that all who dwell on earth will worship him. That's the Antichrist. And everyone whose name not being written, now listen to this, before the foundation of the world in this book of, of the Lamb was slain. Do you hear that? The Bible said those their name were not written in the book of life. Before the foundation of this world was created. The Bible says what? There we are slain. Think about that for a moment, you see. So now before God created this world, God have already what? Have a purpose in his heart. And also, also have a purpose that Jesus Christ will come and die for me and for you. So what this tells me and you today, Calvary is not afterthought. I'm talking about the old time religion. I'm talking about what God have done, you see. Because from the beginning, the Bible says God created you in his own image. The Bible says he created Adam and Eve. You see? And then the Bible says he put them in the garden of Eden. And then what did they do? The Bible said they sin against Almighty God. Not only that they sin, because their sin was fine in them. Not only that they were hiding. Because why? They couldn't be able to see the face of Holy God. So Adam was made perfect in the beginning to have a communion with God. But then again, Adam was having a relationship with God. The Bible used to say that 
God will come down on the cool day of the Garden of Eden. God will have a perfect relationship with Adam. But for the fact that Adam sinned, what Adam did, Adam hide from God. You see? Adam and Eve hide from God. They hide themselves in the bushes, you see? And what God said to Adam, God shouted to Adam. He was calling him. He said, Adam, Adam, where are you? This wasn't the voice of a med police or the voice of a detective. It was the voice of heartbroken God calling Adam and Eve. He couldn't find them. Why? Because the Bible said they were ashamed. You see? Because Jesus, God was asking them, how do you know that you are ashamed? How do you know that you are naked? And because why? Have you eaten from that tree of good and not and evil? Of course they did, you see? So initially when Adam and Eve, they were in the garden, they didn't know they were naked because the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 2, right at the end, the Bible said that they didn't feel shame because why? The glory of God covered them. So it's like no shame, no guilt. But now, when sin finds in them, the Bible says now they have a guilt. So that means there's a guilt and there's also a shame. And the Bible says, what did they do? They figured a way to do what? To sew fake legs, to guide themselves, you see? They tried to do what? To cover themselves from their sin. And the Bible says, God later on caught Adam and Eve, and the Bible said God kill an innocent animal and use that skin to do what? To cover them from their sin. And that was what? The first shedding of the blood. That was the first sacrifice, you see? And right there, in the beginning of Genesis chapter 3, that's when God created what? A sacrificial system, you see? And now, what happens in the life of Adam and Eve after they have their two sons, they have a king, which came out first, and then they have Abel. And the Bible says that uh, Cain killed his brother Abel. So that was the first mother. And why did he kill his brother? The Bible said that uh, Cain was jealous of Abel. Why is he jealous? Because the Bible said two of them came out to worship God. And the Bible said that Cain is, is a man who was, who was on the ground. And we know that he brought the first fruit from this ground. But we also know that God has caused the, caused the ground because of the sins of their parents. And the Bible says, God have no regard for Cain's offering. For God have already do what? Caused the ground. And then, Abel brought out his own sacrifice, which is a lamb, the first born of his first flock. It was a bloody sacrifice. And the Bible says, God had a regard for Abel's offering. But as for Cain's offering, the Bible says, God have no regard. And why did God not have regard for uh, Abel's offering? And do you know why? Why God not have regard for Cain's offering and also have one regard for every offering? It's because one, the Bible says, without shining of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And my message for you today is what? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing but the blood of the precious Lamb of Jesus Christ. You see? So today, as we have here today, I want you to know. Is there anything in your life today? It can be forgiven by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if you refuse to accept Jesus Christ today, as sole and personal Savior, my dear friend, when you die, you cannot see God, you see? So the Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And by the way, today, there's a lot of religion of Cain religion today. It's still existing today. And many of you today, you have this religion of war by works. And the Bible says that if, if it is by your own works, if it's by your own self-effort, if it's by your own self-righteousness, are you trying to do what? To make yourself acceptable to God? If that can be done, if that can be done, Jesus Christ could have done what? Die in vain. The Bible says this, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ die in vain. So now, if you go through the Bible, you will find out for yourself that men have been living what? Have been living in sin. You see? Because... If you look into the Genesis chapter 6, you find out that God regretted why he created man. Do you know why? Because the Bible says that God says this, that every thought and imagination of a man and of his heart is what? Is evil. So God was ready to destroy the world. And the Bible said that he found favor in the eyes of, his, of, of Noah. And the Bible said that Noah built the ark. Then when Noah finished building the ark, on the day... What did God do? God put Noah inside the ark and then do or shut the door. So that ark become a type and a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see? And the Bible says, after the flood, Noah came out from the ark in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. 
And then Noah built an altar to God and took some, took some of the every clean animal and some of the clean animals of bed and offered burnt offering on the altar for God. This happened, my dear friends, more than 2,000 years ago of the human history. And now, 2,000 years now, we still have the same failure. You see? And the word of God telling me and you today, my dear friends, without shining of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And furthermore, if you go to the Bible, Genesis chapter 22, you will find out there was a man, the Bible called Abraham, and he was a progenitor uh, for the father of the Hebrew race. And we know that Abraham called to do what? To offer his own son, Isaac, on altar upon the mountain Moriah, which this mountain on which the temple was built later on. And we also know that upon this mountain, our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ, was crucified on the mountain of Moriah. And because this was done in precision, God said to Abraham, offer your son Isaac on this mountain, not in another mountain, just particularly on this mountain. And the Bible said, Abraham did not disobey, even though Abraham did not understand. But the Bible says this, that Abraham knew that if God had given him son by, by miracle, which obviously Abraham was almost 100 years and had his own son, Abraham believed that the same God, that if he sacrificed his son, the same God will do what? Will raise him up, you see? So Isaac became a, it became a type of picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, the obedient son, you see? So the Bible said that a wood was laid upon the back of Isaac and then went to the mountain. Isaac and his father Abraham, they started on, on the other side of the mountain. And when they get there, Isaac asked his father, Father, here is the wood and here is the fire. But where is the sacrifice? Abraham gave this divine wisdom to this answer of this question. He said, my son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. That's very interesting, isn't, isn't it? Because if you listen to what he says, he said God himself will provide the sacrifice. So God himself will do what? Provide sacrifice. And God let on provide what? That sacrifice. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ, you see? So this is what one redeeming word into himself. So on this mountain, you can notice one thing then. Isaac didn't run away. As some of you today ran away from God. Isaac was obedient. You see? He was obedient son. And he allows his father Abraham to do what? To buy him. He submitted. And he was laid down upon the altar. It's a picture of what our Lord Jesus Christ. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ says, no man can take my life away from me. I lay it down for myself. And that is the same way. Abraham, yes, the angel said to him, Abraham, Abraham, do not have the son, do not harm me, you see. And Abraham looked behind him. The Bible said there was a ram caught in a thick of war horns. A ram crowned with thorns. And God says to Abraham, take that ram and sacrifice him instead of your son. So no wonder in the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ says, remember when Jesus Christ was talking to the unsafe Jewish people, what did he say to them? He said, before Abraham, I was, I also told him, Abraham saw my day and was glad. So the Bible is saying here today, the Bible, the gospel was preached to Abraham. How? When the run was offered in the place of his son. And why did God did that? If you listen to what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 29, 22, the Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So in all through the whole Bible, you also find another man named Moses, who led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Egypt represents the, the, the sin of the world. Pharaoh also represents the devil himself. And God let his people go. God told Pharaoh to the world to let his people go. And you can see that there was a sacrifice happened before the children of Israel leave Egypt. And that picture, me and you today, was the perfect Passover lamb, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Bible said the lamb was sacrificed, you see. And the lamb was put on their doorpost. And because the Bible says, if the angel of the dead saw the, saw the blood, he will do what? He will pass over. If you listen to what the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, and the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when, you see the, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will be before you or destroy you. When I slack the land of Egypt, and when I see the blood, I will pass over. So, supposing these people refuse to do what to put the blood, many of you today will be refusing the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
it breaks my heart it breaks my heart do you know why because most of you today when you die without the blood of our lord jesus christ you cannot see god i don't know the god you are worshiping but i know that god set up a system and that system is bible says without sharing of the blood there's no remission of sins you see so salvation does not come by learning about the life of our lord jesus christ salvation comes my dear friends today by the world, receiving jesus christ the death of our lord jesus christ you see because god said this in the book of hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 without shedding under the blood there is no forgiveness of sins you see so if you fast forward this throughout the whole bible god set up what a temple sacrifice uh, for example in the book of Ezra chapter 29 verse 10 and then he says this then you shall bring the bull before the tent of the meeting Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the bull and they shall lay their hands upon the Austin and confess the sins to the people and then the bull will be led as rabbi slay and then his body will consume by fire and his body will pour out at the altar why why did I have to do all these things why did I have to go on and kill thousands of um, animals and making a sacrifice to our Lord what is the mosaic system it's because the Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So throughout the whole Old Testament, you see the prophecy about the blood. Uh, God was teaching his people throughout the whole way, the way they should approach him. You cannot approach God, you as a sinner. You cannot approach God without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends. And that's why the Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. So now that is the prophecy of, war, of the blood. But it is not only a prophecy also you have the provision of the blood so today i want you to see the provision of the blood because if you look into the old testament sacrifice you can see there was a condition that to do what for the people to do what to respond and that condition god was teaching them just as i have a dog my dog knows that the time i finish fasting she will run to me because she knows that's the time i eat food you see she been con she been conditioned in that way the same way the life of children of Israelite was conditioned a way whereby they cannot approach God without the blood of, of, of animal. And they have to go through this over the centuries. And this also lead to what? Lead to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see? Because the Bible said that God has shown them this way in the Garden of Eden, you see? Throughout the whole testament, without shining of the blood, the Bible said the wages of sin is death. The soul that sin shall surely die. So God is saying here, yeah, without shedding of the blood, the Bible says there's no forgiveness of sins. So, what is the condition of the world that you have here today? Many of you today, do you know that Jesus Christ is coming? If Christ comes now, let, you, let me ask you this personal question. If Jesus Christ comes now, are you ready to follow him? Are you ready? Are you being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? Because your good works, your good looks, your money your car your children your husband your 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 wives everything that you have cannot save you the bible says you have to stand one to one and face the almighty god you have to face god whether you like it or not you have a debt with god and my message for you today there's nothing without the blood of our lord jesus christ you cannot be saved without the blood of our lord jesus christ you see because then again you can see in the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 the Bible said that every priest that stands daily at his service offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away the sins. So this is the Old Testament sacrifice, never satisfy the heart and the mind of God. Because the Bible says that they were sacrificing the animals. There was a time the guy used to do what? If they sin, they're going to do what? They're going to sacrifice the animals. And God said to them, you have having to the book of Psalm, God said, to, God said to them that the thousands of the sheep and the goat and all the rams animal in the, in the mountain belongs to him. He said, God don't need a sacrifice. Are you, are you trying to walk your way into the kingdom of God? Do you think praying five times they're going to take you to God? Do you think fasting can take you to God? Without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends, you cannot see God. Do you know that? Are you listening? Because the Bible says that when they offer all these things, he couldn't save them. Then the Bible said this, by one offering, our Lord Jesus Christ did. One time offering sacrifice, the Bible said what? He did it once, and now he's sitting, he's sitting at the right hand of God. So my dear friends today, there's a reason why I want you to do what? To believe God. Without the shedding of the blood, the Bible said there's no remission of sins, you see? So today, Christ is sitting down on his throne, interceding for me and for you. 
And I also want to see you. I want to also let you know. Not only about the provision of the blood, but I want to tell you, why is it that there's a sin in this world? You see? The Bible says, through one man, sin came into this life. And that man is Adam. Most of you today will say, you don't know Adam. I say, me, I, I don't know him. You say, you didn't vote for him. I didn't vote for him. None of us vote for him. The Bible says, one man sin, all of us sin. But without Adam, where will you be? If Adam didn't come to this life, tell me where will you be? So Adam represents every one of us, my dear friends, you see? Because when Adam sin, every one of us sin, okay? Now, you can say, Adam, Adam have nothing to do with you. So am I as well. But then again, you have to figure out that without Adam being created, me and you cannot exist today. Do you know that? Because the Bible said that when Adam was created, he was given a dominion. But guess what happened? Because he sinned, he lost the dominion. He given it to the devil. You see? And today, this affects all mankind. The Bible said that one man sinned. Guess what? Every one of us sinned. So a son of a slave is always what? A slave. Do you know that? A son of a slave is always a slave. You see? So therefore, the Bible said that we inherited from Adam the sinful nature. And not only that, also death. You see? Because the Bible says in Adam, all of us die. Do you know that? Do you believe that? Because if you don't believe that, I have a, I have a scripture here to back it up. First uh, Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 says this. For as in Adam all die. Now listen, watch this. Listen to this. Also in Christ all are made alive. Thank God for this. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Because why? In one man we all die. In one man, in, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says we all have what? Redemption of sin. So today... I am so glad that Adam sinned that I can receive salvation to our, to, our brother, to our brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because with Adam, Adam sin, I can guarantee you, I must have sinned. Every one of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He says, so we cannot go and blame Adam because we are the same, you see? Then again, I want you also to picture this, you see? Because the Bible says, in Adam all die, and also in Christ all are made alive. All shall do what made alive. Hallelujah. So here is Jesus Christ today. Do you know why Jesus Christ was born? Of Virgin Mary? Many of you have kind of different mindset, misconception why Christ was born of Virgin Mary. I want to tell you today. Adam sin we all die. And the Bible said the wages of sin is dead. You see? And the soul that sin will surely die. So the reason why Jesus Christ was born of Virgin Mary here is this, you see? Because the virgin birth is not, is not incidental. Amen. It is not metacology. You see? Because without the, without the, without the virgin birth, uh, the Christianity, the house of Christianity will close like the house of cards. Do you know that? Because the Bible said, then there's no hope for me and for you apart from the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Why? Because the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is very important. Because why? Christ came to do what? To save us from our sin. If Christ was not born of Virgin Mary, that means he only come to the world to die for his own sin. But we know, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. So today I want to also, for you to know that Jesus Christ came and died and been born of Virgin Mary because of my sin and because of your sin. And if he wasn't born, if he wasn't born in a different way, if he was born in a different way, excuse me, he could have come to the world to only die for his own sin. So don't get this idea uh, that the baby that is in the womb uh, kind of uh, have the same blood circulating through, through the baby and the mother. No. That's why today some of you will tell me um, it's your body. I say no. The baby that, that is in the womb today doesn't belong to you. Can you imagine if they aborted Jesus Christ talking about abortion? Can you imagine they aborted Jesus Christ today? Me and you will not be saved. So that's why the Bible says God hates abortion. Are you committing abortion? I want you today to repent because why? It is a mother. It is a sin against Almighty God. You know? Because that baby that is in the womb doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. The Bible said that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 that he know us. He know us. He teach us before we are even born. You see? So, there's a, there's a separate individual that is in your, in your womb today. That child doesn't share the same blood with the mother. They don't have the same blood type. That's why today... In the society, if you want to find out if the, if, if, if the baby belongs to you, they have to go through the, the father's blood, not the mother's blood, to find out if that baby belongs to you today, see? 
So what I'm trying to say here is this, my dear friends, you see? There's a reason why Jesus Christ was born of Virgin Mary. And let me also tell you, Mary is not the mother of God. God don't have a mother. Amen? Get this wisdom. God never have a mother. You see? God used Virgin Mary to do what? As a way to do what? To bring God into this, into this life. To do what? To set every one of us free. Okay? Now... I also want to see that the born of Virgin Mary, which Jesus Christ was born, is also what? There's a blood. And that blood that was in, in, in the womb of Virgin Mary was in, wasn't uh, Mary's uh, blood. It was what? The blood of God. Amen? I have, a I, have a, I have a passage here to share with you. Now listen to it. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28, Apostle Paul speaking to the uh, um, Ephesians elders and said, to care for the church of God, which he possess with his own blood. That's that, that's the key. That's the key message here. He possess with what with his own blood. You see. So no wonder the Bible calls the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ a precious blood. You see, because after Jesus Christ offered one sacrifice for all the sins and once and for all, the Bible says now he is seated at the right hand of God. So we know that in Adam all die, but in Christ all are alive today. Amen. So Adam affected all the human being and let me also tell you the new statistics today about death is one one out of one dies because of adam but in christ jesus christ my dear friends we all made alive first corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 says this say for in adam all die so also in christ shall all made alive so friend christ died for us all christ died for you christ died for you christ died for me christ died for every one of us today Amen. I want to look at you in your face today and tell you, if you're a Muslim, know that Jesus Christ died for you. If you're a Hindu, I want to tell you Jesus Christ died for you. If you're a Buddha, I want to tell you Jesus Christ died for you. If you're an atheist, I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ died for you. Whatever you call yourself, the Bible says Christ died for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Amen. He gave him his only begotten son. And he came and died for every one of us today. So yes, today, we are all in debt. Amen. Christ paid the debt of our sin. So in Adam all die. In Christ we have war, have redemption. So I want to also let you know that before this happened, if you if you look into the book of Genesis, chapter 15, chapter 3, verse 15, you can see what God said to the serpent there. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. So this word enmity means word warfare. I'll put enmity between you and the woman. And between your offspring and offspring and uh, her offspring, and there, and he shall bruise his head, and he shall do what? Crush his heel. So Satan will wound Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ will do all good. Cross the head of the serpent. Amen. That's what Jesus Christ did. He crossed the head of the serpent, and that's what I'm telling you here today. Without sharing of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have peace. You see, because the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me and you closer to God. Without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you die, you cannot see God, my dear friends, you see? So today I want so to let you know that this, the word of the seed of the woman means what? That seed means what? Jesus Christ, what that seed was planted in the virgin mom, Mary, that was not, that it was being, she was pregnant by what? By the Holy Spirit, you see? Now you listen to what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. He say he offered the sacrifice. Do, do you understand that Jesus Christ wasn't a, wasn't a helpless victim. Jesus Christ didn't die as a matter. Jesus Christ poured out his precious blood. Do you know that to die for you? That's why the book of John chapter 10 verse 18 says, Jesus Christ said this, that no one can take my life from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. In this church, I have received from my father. So Jesus Christ was not only a man, my dear friend. Amen. Many of you today, you see Jesus Christ as a man. Let me tell you, he was a perfectly full man and also a full God. Don't get this idea that Jesus Christ is not God. Don't get the idea. I don't know what they're telling you today. Don't get the idea that Jesus Christ is not God. He's God in person. He's also what? A human being in person. I mean, put it in this way. If you have a CEO of your company, can you imagine if you didn't come down and see what you are doing? How do you feel? You can know that C that CEO is not a good CEO. That's why God came down in a human being flesh to do what? To show us the way. 
the way we need to react. If you want to see a perfect life, Christ is without no sin. You need to look into the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends. You see? Because the Bible says he lived all his life without no sin. You see? Like I tell you before, every one of us is going to die one day. Some people, they commit suicide. God bless you, sir. Sorry? Excuse me. God, God bless you, sir. I have to preach the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So, as I'm telling you here today, my dear friends, the new statistics today that we know that every one of us is going to die, one out of one is going to die. Not if, not but. If you commit suicide, that means you go and you, you, that means you bring your time earlier. But the Bible said that Jesus Christ died. He chose to die. He was without no sin. He chose to die. That's a different. That's a different. I can never die for any of my children. I must, I must be honest. But the Bible said that Christ chose to die. He was not forced. The Bible said he laid down his life so that he can take it again by his own accord. You see? So don't get the idea that just Christ died as a mother. Don't get the idea that just Christ died as a victim. He willingly and voluntarily will die. Because just Christ says this, he could have called the 12 angels, 12 legions of angels. They could have delivered him up on the cross. I was reading the Bible the other day in the book of Isaiah 37 verse 36. The Bible said that one angel killed 185,000 soldiers. Think about that. One angel killed 185,000 soldiers. Can you imagine if our Lord Jesus Christ called the 72 legions or the 12 legions, it could have been how many people? 72,000 angels could have done what? Come to the river and the Bible said what? He stayed to the cross. They were waiting for him to make a call. He said to the cross, why? Because why? As the name he is found to the cross, he did that because he loved you, my dear friend. Are you looking for another love? You can never find love like that. A man laying down his life for his friends. He called you friends, even though he's God. That's why today I can say, Jesus Christ is my friend. Amen? I have fellowship with him. Uh, this place I read to you before, in the book of Genesis chapter 22, God revealed to me. A few months ago. Amen? So you, there's, there's a fellowship. That's what I'm telling you today. If you are serving a God that cannot make the blind to see, that cannot make the cripple to walk, that cannot make the man to come back to life, you need to repent and come to the true God. Because Jesus Christ came and died for you and my friends. You see? So today, what do you have here today? So the word of God is telling you today, throughout the whole prophecy, starting from Genesis to Revelation, it's about Jesus Christ. So there's no, there's no one that when John the Baptist saw him coming, he said, this is the lamp of God, which is away the sins of the world. So if you listen to what the Bible says, talking about the power that is in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12, listen to it again. He said, Christ offered for all the time a single sacrifice for sins, and now he sat down at the right hand of God. Why is he sitting down on the right hand of God? You can see that in the past, the, the, in the Old Testament, the priests were not allowed to sit down, but why is he sitting down? Because now Jesus Christ has bowed down his head and said it is finished. So now he has finished the work the Father sent him to do. That's why today there's no more sacrifice. That's why the river is going home. He tells the river to do what to go home. He don't need any praise to go and ask for forgiveness of sins. Do you know that? All you need to do is to speak one to one with God. We have a liberty. The Bible says approach him with what? With confidence. He, and he will do what? Ask him. He will forgive your sins. You see? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 says this, For it is impossible for the, book, for the blood of the bulls and the ghosts to take away sins. Jesus Christ offered one sacrifice and for all. So my dear friends here today, if you, have been, if you have been lost, if you don't know what Christ, if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you can be saved today. By accepting him today as your Lord and personal Savior. Because the Bible says there is a power that is in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? There is a wonderful working power. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see, when you plead that blood, that blood of redemption, that blood will sanctify you, you see, because without that blood to them, my dear friends, you can never see the kingdom of God. The Bible says, without the of the blood, there's no remission of sins. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. So I have taught to you about the provision of the blood. I have taught to you what the blood does, that is the power that is in the blood. Now today, I want also to let you know, um, I don't know what this generation thinks anymore. This generation, you think you are free? You have been purchased with the pressure of our Lord Jesus Christ, you see? In the past, 
the slaves in the past, they will do everything. If they, get, if they get their hand on the money, they will make sure they free themselves. Amen? If they get their hand in God and slavery, they will make sure they pay that to free themselves. But my Lord and personal Savior come and save every one of us today with his precious blood. Listen to what Peter have to say about this in the first Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and to 19. Knowing that you were ransomed from the fighter ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things, such as gold or silver, but with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, like that of lamb without blemish or spot. So my dear friend, today you've been redeemed with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way it can be liberated from the bondage of sin of Satan apart from the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? My question to you as I'm bringing the message to close. What is your response today to the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? You see, because here in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 and following says this. By the way, this is a fearful, this is a terrifying verse. It's a fearful verse, you see? So he said, for we, if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on evidence of two or three witnesses. Now watch this. How much, verse 29, how much worse punishment do you think that you will deserve by the one who has trampled under the feet of the Son of God, has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he sanctified, has accolished the spirit of the grace. For we know he who says, the vengeance is mine, and I will pray. Again, the Lord will judge his people. Now, what's this one? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living God. This is where I'm going to leave you today. If you're not saved today, get saved. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Our God is a merciful God. If you want salvation today, my dear friends, you can have it. If you want forgiveness today, you can have it. If you want grace today, you can have it. If you want mercy today, you can have it. But if you die without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends, um, the only thing that left for you is the lake of fire, which the Bible called the second death. And there's no way out for you anymore because uh, it's the biggest law down. Uh, there's a gulf. There's a demarcation between hell and, and heaven. There's no transfer. You cannot say jump out from the bus and go to another bus or jump out from this and do this. The Bible says it's a fix. So today, give your life to Jesus Christ. Just as like the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 there is no remission of sins without the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember blessing and mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Amen and amen and amen. How did I hear?